Chapter 25 Imogen waited impatiently on the front porch, shifting her weight from foot to foot. Cookie fed off her restlessness, laying down on the wood slats and then jumping up immediately to pace before laying down again repeatedly. Joe bustled around the kitchen, pots banging as she hobbled around making coffee and eggs on the griddle. Today was the day. Imogen was going on her first horseback camping trip. The sound of a truck and trailer coming down the driveway had Cookie jump and run for the visitor, tail wagging furiously and barking in joy. If Imogen were a dog, she probably would have done the same. She was so excited. Finally, the day was here. She'd never been camping, but then again, it was really glamping. How hard could it be? That alone was going to be a blast. It was the last trek of the season. The leaves were almost all off the trees, and the last few mornings had frost on the ground. Rides weren't done over the winter because the footing would be too slick and treacherous for guests. The most exciting thing, she thought, as Gabe pulled up to a stop, grinning widely and waving to her with one arm while he drove the rig effortlessly, wasn't even the company of a good friend. They always had fun together, even if she ignored the butterfly she'd been getting lately. No, the best part was that Laura and Fortune's owner had decided the horse needed to stay for a while and gave permission for him to go on the trek. She'd get to ride Fortune for three whole days. She went down the steps to meet Fortune at the paddock, halter already on and waiting for her. The car door slammed, and Cookie danced around Gabe's feet, begging for attention, as he opened the ramp of his three-horse stock trailer to make room for the large thoroughbred. He grinned over at the redhead and her large friend, who was jigging in place as they walked to the trailer. Who's excited for the trip? Imogen grinned a hundred-watt smile that could have blinded him with its intensity. You bet your butt we're ready. I don't know who seems more excited, you or the horse. Does it matter? She asked as she loaded Fortune behind Rowdy and tied him with a breakaway cross tie before turning around and closing the ramp behind them. The two horses knew each other well, so she wasn't worried they'd get up to trouble on the short ride. I guess it doesn't. It's just cute. She scrunched up her nose. If anything, it made her even cuter. He bit his lip to keep from laughing. Kids are cute. Puppies are cute. You're kind of like a puppy today. All bouncing around, hair flopping everywhere and drool hanging from your lips. He chuckled and ducked as she made a haphazard attempt to swat him. Feisty today. This is going to be so much fun. Gabe couldn't disagree. He was looking forward to it himself. Normally, he wouldn't be helping, but Bailey had a large group of beginners and needed the extra hands. Since he was done with fall shots and the practice was quiet, he could afford to take a few days off to play in the woods. Before long, time spent outdoors would be limited. What are you looking forward to most? Writing fortune. I'll get them all to myself for this trip. I still can't believe they agreed. Neither could he, honestly. It wasn't like Bianca to share. Plus, she had no love for Imogen. He wished he could blame her, but he knew she saw how he looked at the Jersey girl. He couldn't help it. She was a breath of fresh air and so full of life. It was hard to take things too seriously with her around and he had a lot of seriousness in his life. He wouldn't apologize for wanting a change of pace. It'll be good for his brain, you know? Sorry, I didn't quite catch that last part. He hadn't been lost in thought about her at all. Nope, not him. I said that Fortune will probably love being out on the trails like this for an extended period. It'll be good for his brain. I agree. Some horses get bored with the arena and need a little more mental stimulation. Do you think you're ready for this? He's a lot of horse, and you've only ridden him a few times on the trails while he's been with you. Imogen winked saucily. We got this. We're buds. He's a good boy, and I'm excited to test him a little. Besides, he's gotten here a few times, so he obviously doesn't mind the woods. Apparently not. Just remember, if something goes wrong, Bailey and I will be there to help. I do feel a little weird that they just let him stay with me and are letting me take him on this track. That can't be normal. Yeah, it's not. This whole situation is odd. I have to imagine they made you sign something to protect everyone involved. Imogen waved that away. Yeah, no worries, I signed it. Laura said they wanted to see if he preferred being a trail horse rather than a show jumper. It certainly couldn't hurt to try. I'm only worried he'll pull his Houdini act and get lost from base camp. Considering his history, that's not out of the realm of possibilities. I'll keep a halter on him with a GPS collar just in case. Probably for the best. 
Imogen handed him her duffel bag and whistled for Cookie, looking everywhere for the dog until she realized that she was already heading for the truck, tongue lolling. She had to laugh and imagine Cookie was gloating, calling Shotgun in her own way to get the best seat. She had another thing coming, since Cookie wasn't going with her this time. She shooed away her dog, opened the door to the truck, but before hopping in, cupped her hands around her mouth. Bye, Aunt Jo! Her aunt poked her head out of the door and waved a crutch in the air. Bye, kids. Have fun and come back safe. With a slam of the screen door, she was back inside. Imogen climbed in and, grinning at Gabe, said, Well, what are you waiting for? Let's go, mister. Gabe grinned, tipped the brim of his ball cap, and reversed the trailer. It was really happening. This can't be happening, Imogen thought. There was so much chaos. She, Cookie, and Gabe arrived at Bailey's without issue, unloaded the horses, and got them fed and watered. Fortune and Rowdy were placed in a separate paddock from the other horses, but happily munched away and ignored the screams and running figures of the guests' children. It felt like they were everywhere, even when Bailey assured her there were only three. How could three small children make so much noise? It baffled the mind. Bailey was handling guest requests while Gabe jumped in and helped prepare the grooming supplies and tack assigned to each horse. While she'd been looking forward to the riding, she forgot one big aspect, having to deal with a large group of strangers. Luckily, her job was mostly to serve as a trail guide so the beginner riders were safe and secure. That she was looking forward to. It's fine. Everything is going to be fine. She draped her arms over the railing and hid her face in them. Fortune walked over to her and put his head on top of hers, resting it there gently before nibbling her hair. Thanks, buddy. I needed that. He snuffled her hair, making her ticklish. Okay, I'll be in my best behavior. Fortune sneezed right in her face. Great, awesome. You know, I used to live a life where I wasn't covered in dirt, grime, and some type of animal waste at all times. Yes, but were you as happy? Imogen whirled to greet Bailey, who was dressed in her usual overalls, with a ball cap and a thick Carhartt coat opened and covered in remnants of shavings. She definitely had a signature style. I wasn't unhappy, I don't think. Hmm... Bailey looked her over and then reached to give Fortune a scratch on his neck, which he graciously accepted as he continued to chew on Imogen's hair. Just wanted to check in and see how you were doing. Are you ready for this? Imogen wanted to give a quick response, but she forced herself to pause. This was her friend's business, her livelihood. She was here to help, and that meant being honest with herself and her friends. Yes, I think so. It's new, and there's a learning curve. I just don't want to disappoint you. Bailey crossed her arms and leaned against the fence next to her. She didn't speak a lot, and she was always careful with her words, like they held weight. For someone like Imogen, who spoke her mind and didn't always use a filter, it could be both frustrating and something she could appreciate. You won't disappoint me. You work hard. You don't wait for someone to tell you what to do, and you want this trek to work well. I appreciate your help. She looked over at Imogen and Fortune, who had taken to nudging her back through the fence railings to get her attention. He has a crush on you. Imogen laughed out loud. <laughs> Maybe, but it doesn't really matter. He's not mine and never will be. I'm leaving. Bailey looked her over, then turned her attention to the farm and spotted Gabe haying the horses in the next paddock. Maybe you shouldn't. Imogen looked over at her friend's soft words, but didn't answer. I'm not saying you must set roots here. I'm just saying that he cares about you. You fit in here, somehow, despite your suburban ways. That's a glowing endorsement if I've ever heard one, Imogen noted, turning to stroke Fortune's soft nose as he lipped her fingers and made her smile. It's the truth. Fortune doesn't need me. I was just in the right place at the right time to find him. If Aunt Jo wouldn't have hurt herself, it would have been her he latched on to. Bailey smiled wryly and stood up straight. Who said I was talking about fortune? When Imogen's breath caught, she continued with a small smile. He'll try for you, if you ask him to. Don't ask for more than you can give back. Imogen stared dumbly after her friend. What the hell was that supposed to mean? 
And with that last comment, Bailey walked away to check on a guest. Imogen gave a loud sigh, confused, and put her head back down in her arms. Bored, and with Hay now available again, Fortune wandered off to have his dinner. So it's like that, huh? I'm your favorite until something better comes along? She was half serious, but jumped out of her skin when a deep voice came from behind her. Not all men know what they want. Imogen whipped around, putting her hand to her throat. Gabe, you startled me. Then she laughed at how silly she must have looked. Fortune and I were just having a little moment, but he's cast me away for hay. Well, there's nothing more important to a man than his stomach. She grinned widely. I can't fault him for that. She then nodded in Bailey's direction. Do you know the scene in Star Wars where Yoda is on Luke's back as he trains him and just keeps hitting him with a stick? Unsure where this was going, Gabe nodded but didn't say anything. After a few minutes, Imogen looked up at him with wide eyes, biting her full lip. I think I just got the full Yoda from Bailey. He whistled low through his teeth. Tough love, huh? Bailey is quiet, but she's wise. When she does speak, I usually pay attention. What did she say? Imogen thought about what Bailey had said. There was nothing shocking. In fact, it was flattering to think her friend might want her to stay. Still, she'd thought Bailey had been referring to the horse. If she wasn't, did that mean she was talking about Gabe? No, it couldn't be. Gabe was so steady and dependable, the opposite of her, and he knew she had no plans to stay. He would never let himself like her, knowing she was leaving. But... What if he did like her? Would that be so bad? Yes, it would be terrible. She'd just hurt him in the end when she left. Fortune was a horse. He didn't care as long as he was fed and sheltered. He wouldn't miss her. Gabe was her friend. He might miss her, but it wasn't any deeper than that. Earth to Imogen. Gabe reached out to shake her by the shoulder, then bent down to tip her ball cap up and look into her eyes. Are you okay? You're zoning out and look like you're going to vomit. Ew, don't be gross. She took her ball cap off and fixed the hair underneath to give herself a moment. Why was she so flustered at the thought of Gabe liking her? Sure, he was objectively hot, anyone with eyes could see that. But he was complicated. And she avoided complicated. It's not like you to be quiet. Are you sure you're okay? Gabe was genuinely concerned. She was so pale, and her hands were shaking. I'm fine, thanks. Just nerves about the trip, I guess. I always get a little anxious before starting something new. He nodded, understanding. I get that. New things can be scary. But they can also be exciting. Do you think it's more nerves or excitement? I think it's a little of both, Imogen admitted honestly. I've done a lot of new things in my life, so you'd think I'd be better at it. My mom says I get bored easily. Gabe put his hands in his pockets, trying to fight the compulsion to speak out against a woman he'd never met, but already didn't like. Is it boredom, or are you just searching for something? She grinned wryly. Does it matter? I guess it doesn't. I just have one question for you. She looked up at him, her blue eyes asking the question. What will you do when you find what you're looking for? With that nugget of annoying wisdom, Gabe walked away, leaving her to consider his words. Why did everyone else seem so sure she was a deeper person than she was? What you saw was what you got when it came to her. Wasn't it?